Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much indeed for joining me. Um, I'm going to spend a little bit of time focusing on Uganda today. So um, giving you a really good uh, grounding of how Uganda as a destination um, works incredibly well for uh, some seasoned uh, travelers. And it's not just all about gorilla trekking. Of course, that's a major component of it, but it's not all about the gorillas. So I'm John Round Turner. I'm the Sales and Marketing Director for Abercrombie & Kent in Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda. Um, so very good morning to you all. It's actually 7 o'clock at night because um, I am in Nairobi. So I know we're going to focus on Uganda today, but I'm actually going to start with some of the offers that uh, we've got out there for East Africa. So just bear with me for a minute or two while we, um, while we cover a little bit of this. Um, so just so everybody's aware, from now until the 15th of December, all accommodation and transport has been discounted. And also, for the month of November, gorilla permits are reduced from the usual $600 to $350 per person. For Tanzania, there's a fantastic um, offer, 50% uh, off accommodation. So it's a set itinerary with three nights Azora Salu, which is in the southern part of Tanzania, amazing part of, um, uh, part of the world. Uh, 55,000 square miles is the National Reserve, um, 110,000 elephants, some of the highest density elephants you're going to find anywhere in the world. And that's coupled with three nights at Sanctuary Sudani Safari Lodge, which is um, in Sudani National Park, located on the Tanzanian mainland, but directly opposite Zanzibar. So it's built right on the beach, so you've got National Park behind you, four of the big five, but you've got the Indian Ocean in front of you. So that's for people who are looking for something a little bit, um, a little bit different. That's a fantastic safari offer that we have there. This is brand new. I believe you guys are the first people to see this. Um, it's a Kenya incentive um, booking. So for every booking we get to Kenya that's over $10,000, we'll give you a $500 gift card. And that's from bookings from uh, now until the end of this year. And, but that is for travel dates now until the end of 2015. Please don't panic. I will make sure that the pre this whole entire presentation is available to you. Um, probably we'll send it out tomorrow. Um, and this information will be there for you as well. And also in Kenya, a great itinerary covering northern Kenya in Larson's camp, which is in Samburu. Um, again, a great location for elephants. And I've very rarely gone to Samburu in the last 10 years and not seen leopard. And then three nights at Sanctuary Olanana with one night on arrival at the Fairmont Norfolk in Nairobi. It's a great offer, saving at £1,500 per person uh, between the 15th of October and the 15th of December. So if you've got any last minute safari goers, that would work incredibly well. Right, on to the main point of our webinar today, Uganda. So this is Uganda. Um, located right on the shores of Lake Victoria. I think it's important that you guys know two things on, from the outset. One is that ANK has its own office located in Kampala. And by that, I mean we have our own um, tours manager base there. We have our own drivers, our own vehicles, our own guides. So we're one of the few um, uh, DMCs that can boast that. Also, the second thing is getting to Uganda has actually never been easier. British Airways, um, KLM, uh, Ethiopia, and a lot of the Middle East airlines, they're all flying into Uganda on a daily basis. So getting to Uganda is very, very straightforward and very, very simple. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to sort of talk you through the main safari points and how, a, how an itinerary fits together. We're going to show you three different levels of accommodation within each area. Um, and then at the end, there's a, uh, a few slides which have pricing, uh, on it, so you can just have an idea of um, of costs. So this is the main part of Uganda. This is what I call the good bit. So it's Kibali National Park, Queen Elizabeth National Park, and Bwindi. Those are the main areas that clients who've not done Uganda are going to want to go to. If people have a little bit more time, we can add Murchison Falls, which is slightly further north, right next door to the U of Uganda on the, um, on the map there. And Murchison Falls is quite special because it's actually the narrowest point of the River Nile. 
the, 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 the river flows through a, a crevice that's about 21 feet wide. And there's some other some good wildlife up there. But we're going to mainly concentrate on the on the highlights, if you like, and that's those three um, those three national parks I mentioned earlier that are highlighted there. So this is generally what it would look like on a map: people flying in and out of Entebbe to Kibali, Queen Elizabeth National Park, and Windy. So Kibali is very well known for its beautiful chimpanzee tracking, a stunning experience, um, really underrated, but one of the best uh, wildlife experiences that I, I had in the last five years. It was absolutely amazing. And into Queen Elizabeth National Park, which is a, a more traditional, you know, air quotes around traditional, um, national park. It's got a great um, lion sightings. U Uganda, Uganda cob is a type of antelope, which I'll show you a picture of later. Uh, tree climbing lions in the, in the southern part of Queen Elizabeth National Park. And then on to Bwindi. Uh, Bwindi, of course, is famous for mountain gorilla trekking. So in Entebbe, this is the first night because of the way the flight schedules work and it's a long old way from North America. Um, we would always recommend clients to do an overnight in uh, Entebbe. So I'm going to go through three different options that we have as preferred properties that we use a lot of. So, on the, so it'll be a gold standard, a silver standard and a bronze standard. So the gold standard, the Lake Victoria Serena Hotel, right on the um, edge of Lake Victoria with stunning views. It's a great property. Yes, it's quite a large property, but the, it's really one of the best ones in, um, in Entebbe and Kampala. The silver level would be a, like a Protea Hotel, again, right on the shores of Lake Victoria. And then a bronze standard would be the Boma Hotel, which is only 10 rooms, incredibly well hosted. Um, and about seven minute drive from Entebbe. Now Entebbe traffic is pretty renowned for being rather dreadful. So this is a great option if, um, uh, if clients want to avoid too much traffic. So once they've done their overnight in Entebbe, and I really wouldn't recommend too, too much more time there. There's not a lot to see. It's really a, a city that's based on business rather than anything to do with tourism, would be to get them to fly into Kibali National Park An hour and 15 minute flight is a scheduled service. Um, Uganda now has a scheduled service really connecting the key areas of Uganda, southwest Uganda. And this is something that's only happened in the last two years or so. Um, there's a number of, number of different operators that we, that we use um, very, very successfully. It's in a 12-seater caravan, which is the little bush aircraft that we use across Kenya, Tanzania and Uganda. So in uh, Kibali, about an hour's drive away is Cheninga Lodge. Now Cheninga Lodge is an amazing property, sort of built a little bit like a Whistler log cabin. It's built by a very young British guy who uh, was an architect and fell in love with Uganda, and his dream was to build himself this amazing, um, this amazing lodge. It's right on a crater lake. So if you're looking at that image on the right-hand side, it drops very, very steeply down uh, onto it a beautiful crater lake, which Uganda is full of. There's thousands of them. They're incredibly deep. They're all fresh water. Um, and you can actually do some walks around there as well. I will say that there's 107 steps from the car park to the reception. So we need to bear that in mind um, for people who maybe don't have the uh, huge amount of mo um, mobility. But then again, Uganda is one of those places where they're going to have to have that. Uh, to do the chimp tracking and, and the gorilla tracking, but I'll come on to that a little bit later. Silver is in Dali Lodge. Again, it's about an hour from the Kibali uh, forest itself. Um, it's privately owned by um, some very successful vanilla farmers. They, they actually farm uh, vanilla pots, and they built this lodge because they love to share where they are. Again, it's built on a beautiful crater lake with some amazing walks around there. Incredibly well hosted by, um, his name's Aubrey Price, um, who is of British descent, but has been living, his family been in Uganda for many, many years. Um, I know them quite well, and I've stayed at Ndali, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. So it's another little, little quite very boutique -y little um, little spot. I, I, I do enjoy my time there. And then on a bronze level is Primate Lodge. Now, Primate Lodge is located inside Kibali National Park, so it's a four or five minute walk from the lodge down to the um, uh, to the start of your gorilla track. 
so ch sorry, chimpanzee track, I, I beg your pardon. So chimpanzees, an amazing experience. I really enjoyed my time uh, when I was there um, a, about a year ago. Uh, we spent two and a half hours with these amazing creatures and to s see them and interact with them um, from afar was, was wonderful. Uh, chimpanzees are incredibly interesting um, mammals. Uh, they, they sort of exhibit a lot of the same traits as humans do, very caring, very nurturing. Um, and I would really recommend if anybody has the opportunity to spend some time with uh, or get some clients to the chimps, they really, they really should. It's a fantastic experience. It's something I enjoyed it's so, so much. I mean, I really can't get a, across to you how much I enjoyed that. Um, so just a little few hints and tips. Uh, chimpanzee uh, tracking permits, um, relatively cheap, $150 per person per track. They're relatively easy to get because there are two tracks per day, um, which leave in the morning at about 8 o'clock and in the afternoon at about 2 o'clock. You're normally allowed only an hour once you get to your chimpanzee family. You're normally only allowed an hour to, to, with them. We actually spent two and a half hours with our uh, family when I was there. So they're not as strict as they are when they're with the gorillas, when you're talking about the gorillas. Um, also, don't forget the chimps spend a lot more time in the trees, so you don't have that... Um, uh, putting pressure on their natural environment or sort of feeling that you're getting too uh, close into their into their family units. The terrain is actually very very flat. You'd be surprised. Uh, it's not in a rainforest per se like the um, like the gorilla tracking. So it is very 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 flat indeed. The paths are pretty well defined. Um, and for us, you know, walking is between ten minutes and an hour, to, depending on which chimpanzee family you're go going to and which ones. You get to you get to see, and how much activity they're doing. Chimpanzees are incredibly active. Um, they're constantly fighting, bickering, um, so they do tend to move around a lot more than the um, gorillas do. So some of my top tips: I would definitely take a porter with you. Uh, you need to take your water, your camera, your waterproofs. Um, they're always they're going to help you carry carry that. But I also like to think that they you're really helping the local community. The porters are fantastic. Um, I think it's thirty dollars or twenty five dollars uh, to have a porter, and they really do help contribute with them um, with the whole experience uh, they 're talking to you they 're letting you know about some funny things that have happened in the past. You also go out with a very experienced guide um, who knows exactly the the gorilla families the beha the chimpanzee family sorry and the behaviors um, and then I would also advise your clients that Chimps spend a lot of times in the trees, which actually makes taking pictures incredibly difficult. So you've got these very dark animals with a very, very clear sort of sunny or cloudy background. It makes it very difficult indeed. Um, this is just a snapshot that I took of um, one or two people uh, trying to take pictures of the um, of the chimps. I don't know if you can see the guy on the right there had a massive, massive camera, twice as big as anything else you can see there. And everything from head to toe, he was entirely covered in camouflage. And there was his wife with a bright red shirt on. It was quite amusing. So this is another picture I took of our, of our little group uh, when we went out chimpanzee tracking. As you can see, I just really wanted to highlight that it's actually not very difficult tracking at all. So once they've had that great chimpanzee experience, head down in, into Queen Elizabeth National Park. I would recommend people drive. Um, it's nice to see a little bit more of the... Um, of the local community, uh, of the local landscape. It can be a four hour drive, but the roads are not too bad at all. But once you're sort of getting out of Kibali, you're within an hour, hour and a half, you're into Queen Elizabeth National Park. So it's pretty much game driving from then on in. So again, our three different categories of, um, of rooms, the Ishasha Wilderness Camp, which is in the Ishasha, which is the southern part of Queen Elizabeth National Park, really a fantastic camp, definitely the best one in the area by a long, long way. It's actually the only one in Ishasha, so you've got the whole park pretty much to yourself. Uh, ten rooms, they're all um, tented, they've all recently re been redone uh, within the last year. Um, right on the river, um, a lovely location, the weaver birds in the morning wake you up, which is a, a fantastic way to wake up, I think. So our silver is Moya Lodge which is sort of in the northern part of Queen Elizabeth National Park. It's quite large, but it's got great views over on the left-hand side. You, you can see what they call Cheninga, um, Cheninga Gorge. And on the right-hand side is another one of these massive crater lakes. 
and then Katara Lodge. Small, little bit boutique, very rustic. I mean, it's not a backpacker's place by any means, but it is quite rustic. Um, but it has fantastic views over, over Queen Elizabeth. I forgot to mention at the beginning, if anybody does have any questions, please feel free to type them in at any point, and I'll answer as many questions as I possibly can at the end. Tree climbing lions. Ishasha, and in particular, but Queen Elizabeth National Park is very famous for these tree climbing lions. On my experience there, we had um, a lioness and her two of her cubs in the, um, in the tree. And we were the only people around. It was it was absolutely astonishing. We shared we had this sort of lion experience for about forty five minutes uh, on our own. And the only reason we let you know we only had it for forty five minutes was we actually had to leave to get on to our next site inspection. So I thoroughly enjoyed that. And please don't tell anybody, but I was actually standing on the roof of our of our Land Cruiser, and then I was eye to eye with the lioness. Unfortunately, my pictures are not as good as this um, as this one, which is why I've used this one. I mentioned the Uganda cob a little bit earlier. So this is it. They are indigenous to Uganda, maybe a little bit into the Democratic Republic of Cong Congo, but mainly in Uganda. Um, Queen Elizabeth National Park has a couple of herds. One of the herds is about 4,000 strong. Um, you can see they look a little bit like the um, impala antelope that we're much more used to seeing in Kenya and Tanzania. This is the staple, the staple diet of the lions. But there is other good good game so you can see leopard you're going to see some elephants they've got some great zebra sightings as well so it's a national park with a lot of good game but a lot of the the, the, the sort of game experience is built around the tree climbing lions so once they've done in queen elizabeth they make their way down to bwindi in the southwest of um, of uganda and this is where we have the gorillas it's a four-hour drive from Ishasha or a seven-hour drive from Mwea if you're staying in Mwea Lodge, which is further north in Queen Elizabeth. The road is not brilliant. Um, it's quite narrow. It's getting to a very hilly and um, uh, undulating part of Uganda. So you sort of wind your way around a lot of banana fields, a lot of other, uh, other arable crops, but you also get a chance to see the local communities and, and, and how they live. And the kids, of course, are always friendly. They're always waving. Um, generally asking for sweets as well, which we don't recommend giving. So the three categories of rooms that we really prefer are Sanctuary Gorilla Forest Camp, eight tents, incredibly unique. It's, um, it's the camp that's furthest inside Windy National Park. It's a, it's a five minute walk maximum, and I'm being very, very pessimistic with that, um, down to the HQ where you start your gorilla tracking from. Where you have your where you have your briefings, they've got a fantastic spa. They also have bathtubs, so please don't underestimate the value of jumping into a nice hot bath after you spent a day on the mountain tracking the, um, the mountain gorillas. Volcanoes. It's about a five-minute walk from uh, from Sanctuary Gorilla Forest Camp, so it's in the, exactly the same area. It's got a fantastic view straight over the um, over the Windy Hills. And look, if, um, if Sanctuary Gorilla Forest Camp is full, then I have no qualms about staying, in, um, staying at Volcanoes. It's actually a very, very, very nice property. And then lastly is the Homer Lodge. Um, again, a small property. Um, all the rooms are built on these stilts. Great views over the, um, uh, over the National Park as well. Um, and again, it's in exactly the same area. It's, it's a two-minute walk from Sanctuary Gorilla Forest Camp and a, and a four-minute walk to the park headquarters where you'll do your gorilla tracking. So gorillas, this is really the key of what people want to go to Uganda to see. And um, I'm very, very fortunate. I was, uh, I'm born and raised in, in Kenya. My grandfather was the warden of Masai Mara National Park while I was growing up. And I spent a lot of time with him um, in the Masai Mara. I've done a lot of game driving and I've had a lot of wonderful game experiences. But the gorillas is something that um, that really will live with me forever. It's a, a stunning experience, and just to be able to look into um, into these guys' eyes and, and and see the tenderness and 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 the love that they have with each other. Um, I tend to find gorillas very similar to sort of the best of humans. You know, they're loving, they're caring, they're nurturing. Whereas the chimpanzees are sort of polar opposites. They're the, really the worst of humans. Um, they're incredibly aggressive. They're pretty brutal. Um, they're incredibly selfish as well. So to have that um, sort of 
two varying ends of the scale of, um, of, of primates in one experience is absolutely fantastic. At this point, I would normally show people a video of a client who was at Sanctuary Gorilla Forest Camp um, who had this wonderful interaction with the gorillas, but um, in, in my practice runs, it, it was not showing very well on your screens. So what we'll do is we'll make sure that's included in the um, in the follow-up email, and it's actually on YouTube, so we'll send the link out. Please view it, but also please feel free to use it as a sales tool to get your clients excited about gorillas. It's a fantastic way of really uh, hooking them in. For those people who need a little extra help up the um, up the uh, up the mountain to to go gorilla tracking, we have what we call the sedan chair. So it's basically a, a seat that's been bolted onto um, to a frame that's been carried by uh, four porters. So you need two. You take two teams of four porters, and they rotate round when they get a bit tired. This for me is a way of all the people who maybe thought that they would never get a chance to see gorillas because they felt that their knees were bad, their back was bad, their hips were bad. Um, this is an experience that um, that they should should really consider because it. It, it's a great way of getting them to see the gorillas. So what you do, the whole sort of gorilla tracking experience starts with heading down to park headquarters. You'll get broken off into your various groups. Um, so you'll meet the people who you're tracking the gorillas with. You'll meet your guide, um, who's generally incredibly knowledgeable. These guys go to the, see the gorillas on a five or six times in a week. He'll have a, a bit of information there about your gorilla, particular gorilla family, so that you're well versed. He'll talk you through the alpha male, um, any brothers he may have, his his females, his harem, um, and then any little ones that they've got as well. And it's very I love getting to know my gorillas before actually going. Um, and it was great to then meet the other people in the um, in the group who you're going tracking with. He will give you the, the full rundown of what you can and can't do. Um, very simply, you know, you, you, you can't take, um, when you go to the gorillas, you, you, you can't give them anything to eat or to drink. Um, of course, you have to stay 21 feet, 7 meters away from them. They're trying to prevent the spread of, um, of, of diseases. You know, as something as simple as the human cold can actually devastate a family of gorillas because they have no immunity towards that. Um, so then once you've got your briefing, they will then take you um, take you up uh, to see your gorilla family. So you'll trek the gorillas, and then when they get about uh, 300 feet or 100 meters away from your gorilla family, the guide will say, "Right, I want you to take everything off. Not everything off, within reason. I mean, take your backpack off. Um, you know, make sure there's no sweets in your pocket or or anything like that. And he'll just give you a final briefing, saying, "We might remember these are the gorillas. These are the rules. Please don't take anything to drink. The the porters will stay here, and if you want to drink." One of us will um, will escort you back. And what they also do in Uganda that I find very interesting is each gorilla family, and they have nine gorilla families that are habituated out of 32. There are actually 32 wild, uh, 32 families of gorillas in, in Bwindi, which is the highest of anywhere in the world. Um, but they have nine habituated families. So each family has a set of three trackers. So these trackers leave very early in the morning at daybreak, and they go to the last place they saw the gorillas the day before. And then they follow the tracks um, so that when, you're, when your guide has finished your briefing and you head off up the hill, the, he'll, he'll be in radio contact with the, um, with the trackers saying, like, you know, we're here, we're here, we're there, they've moved, or this is where they are. So you're not spending as too much time when you're tracking. They try and minimize that as much as they possibly can. So a little few hints, tips, and advice. Um, there are eight permits per day per gorilla family. And as I said, there are nine gorilla families. The cost is $600. You spend a maximum of 60 minutes with the gorilla family, and they are incredibly strict about this. Um, they, 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 the gorilla con conservation project is, is fantastic. Um, for peak season, we do advise to book six to eight months in advance. And peak season is January, February, March. And then July, end of June, July, August, September, and October. So I'll repeat that. It's January, February, March, and then sort of end of June, July, August, September, and first half of October. The terrain, it can be hilly, and I would definitely recommend for, for clients they've got to do some training 
um, in advance. For me, when I did mine, we tracked the, 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 the gorillas for about 45 minutes. 24 minutes of that was relatively straightforward. Uh, and then the last half was a little bit more difficult. Um, the gorillas were actually on a sort of a, quite a steep downslope when we, when we eventually got to them, which was fine going down, but going back was a little bit tricky. Um, my top tips, I would definitely take a porter with you and they're going to carry all your, your, your picnic lunch and your water and your camera and your waterproofs and everything else. But they're also fantastic. I mean, I, I don't know if anybody's, um, any of you guys have had the, the displeasure of meeting me, but I'm not small. I'm, you know, 240 pounds. Um, it's about 100 and, what, 105, 106 kilos. Um, so this little porter is 140, I think about 160 pounds. I mean, he weighed not, uh, nothing. So we're walking up that little steep bit of hill that we, when we first left the gorillas, he's actually trying to push me up the hill. Um, so I said to him, Sunshine, you're carrying my water. You've got my lunch. You've got my camera. Um, I think I should be carrying you. And he, and he laughed. But they are fantastic. Um, and they, they do help you huge amount. Um, waterproof hiking boots it, it, it is, is very important, but I would say more important than that is the gaiters that you wear that sort of cover your, your, from your knee down. Um, walking sticks are available, um, certainly at places like uh, volcanoes and gorilla forest camp. Um, walking sticks are there which you can borrow, but if people want a memento, they can buy them as well. Put the camera down. I, in the, in the few tracks that I've done, I think people generally fall into one of two categories. First category is they spend so much time in awe of the, the gorillas that they actually forget to take any pictures whatsoever. Um, and then the second category is people are so in awe of the gorillas, they want to make sure they capture the moment. Um, so they spend their entire time taking pictures. So their, their gorilla experience is seen from, from a, you know, a four foot by um, uh, a four inch by three inch um, uh, camera screen so always you know I would always advise people you know remember to put the camera down um, or pick it up in some respects what we can do is is get people to do two tracks so they can track gorillas on two separate days that way whichever category they fall into they're not going to make the same mistake the next day the question I get asked a lot is why would we want to send clients to Uganda instead of Rwanda for me Uganda has a lot more to offer as a destination. It's got fantastic chimpanzee tracking. Um, at, at Windy, you've got what they call the butterfly walk, which is three or four hour walk through the, the lower part of the rainforest. And you see it, you know, 500 different species of butterflies, um, which you really can't get in, in Rwanda. Um, Uganda is done, tracking is done at, at 10,000 feet or 3,300 3, meters, whereas in Rwanda at 12,000 feet or 2,600 meters. So there's quite a big difference there. Uganda, we have a dedicated a and office, whereas in Rwanda, yes, of course, we can take um, Rwanda bookings, but we have a third party um, supplier there that we use. We are very, very good indeed. Um, but with an a dedicated a and office, if there's any issues, any problems, you know you're going to have the a &K safety net to look after the clients. And the Rwanda Gorilla Permit is $750 per person. Um, also, what's not on the list there is, um, is when you're in um, in Uganda, they actually break you, as I said, they break you down into your little units, your eight people units that are going to track the gorillas, um, and you get your briefing done in, individually. Whereas Rwanda, you get all 80 people because they have 10 gorilla families and eight, eight, um, eight people per gorilla family. So you have all 80 people with one, uh, one, um, one briefing, which I find a little bit less... Um, not, not as personal. Also, Uganda has, as down in Bwindi, is the, um, is the Batwa Pygmy tribe. Now, these are the smallest race on earth. They average about four foot three, four foot four. Um, they're indigenous to the rainforest, and they still live in tree houses, as they did many, many, um, as they have done for centuries. And they're very open and very honest about sharing their, their life to you. And again, it's something you don't get in, um, in Rwanda. This is a, um, a medicine man. He's not a witch doctor. This is a, a traditional healer. He treats the local community with a variety of um, berries, uh, roots, leaves. Um, he's actually a very interesting guy to, to talk to. He doesn't speak a word of English, but then one of our, um, one of our guides will be able to translate, um, translate for you. Uh, we spent about 20 minutes. He actually thankfully speaks Kiswahili, as do I. 
Um, so we actually spent about 20 minutes, half an hour with him and his family and telling us all the ailments and, and all the things he's treated. Um, I, I, I stopped of, short of um, uh, actually tasting anything or, or having any, uh, any treatment because I was actually feeling fine. But I was, um, I was quite tempted. If I was ill, I would, have been, um, I would have been very happy to be treated by him. The butterfly walk I mentioned, just thousands and thousands of, of, of butterflies. Um, really a fantastic little experience. If you've got a, uh, we actually did ours. We did our gorilla tracking in the morning, so we came back at, by, by lunchtime. So now what do we do in the afternoon? So um, we went out on this butterfly walk, and it was, it was stunning. Um, I've never seen quite so many, um, many butterflies anywhere in my life. It was really wonderful. So a little something, a little extra. And then birds. Uganda has 1,350 different species of birds in, in a very, very small country. If you compare it to, um, to, to, to a state in the US, it's, it's not much bigger than um, Vermont. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've, I'm a bit of a twitcher, and uh, I saw 25 or 26 different species of birds that I'd never seen before in my life. So if you've got some keen bird watchers, Uganda is a fantastic destination for them. So at the end of our little safari, it's a couple of hours flight from Windy back into Entebbe, again on the scheduled service, again in a 12-seater caravan. Charter flights are available. If clients do want to have that extra level of flexibility, then we can do that for them. Now, there looks like there's a lot of information here, but I don't want to go through everything, but this is just how an itinerary would flow and then we put a from price so people can have that in their mind. Um, the various differences between the, the different categories of, um, of hotels. As I said, we will make these available um, when we send out our thank you emails. If people are interested, then they can have this at the, in, their, in their back pocket. It's getting close to me stopping talking. So if anybody has any questions, Please ask, uh, um, send them in now. I can see there's a few questions already there, which is great. Um, but to please do uh, type in your questions now. So this is, a, again, the silver one, just to break it down for you. So you've got your, um, your drive times and your, an idea of rates. Please don't hold us to this. I don't want you to say, well, John said. Um, but this is just to give you an idea. And then again, going the wrong way, sorry, and again for the bronze. So if there are any questions, please answer them now. And I am going to try and answer these questions that have come in already. Um, question, will you have the webinar online? I'm actually recording it now. Um, so yes, we will make this available either through Dropbox or downloadable from our website. So yes, of course we will do that. Um, okay. Chambura Gorge in Queen Elizabeth National Park. What would I rate it as? I would rate it as probably a silver. Um, Bronze or silver, it's definitely not a, a gold standard property. It's, um, it's in that, um, that silver bracket. Uh, second part of that question. Is it for four or seven hours? It's going to be a seven-hour drive. It's in the northern part of Queen Elizabeth National Park, so it's a seven-hour drive um, from the gorge down into Windy. Uh, somebody asked if we could get a copy of this chart. I will get, make sure the whole presentation is available to you. I don't know which chart you're talking about, but yes, you'll have the whole presentation. Uh, what immunizations are required? We would always recommend people to have yellow fever um, and tetanus. Um, those are the standards. I mean, me living in, in, in Nairobi, um, I make sure I'm, uh, I'm, I'm covered with, with those. Um, I would also recommend that clients double check with their medical practitioner just in case there's anything else that they feel they need. But really from my side, those would be the key ones. Oh yes, okay. Um, that's it for the questions that I've had so far. But if anybody has any more questions, please feel free to type them in now and I will happily, happily answer them. If you want me to give you guys another, another minute or so for questions, I will happily take them.
Okay, one of the questions was the copy of the last chart I showed. Uh, let me... Is it that one? Just um, while I answer the other questions, if I can't get the yellow fever shot, am I allowed into Uganda? Um, yes, you can. Um, just make sure that we're aware of it in advance, and we can do we can do things. It's 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 not not the end of the world. It's if your clients or you are coming from somewhere like Tanzania or Zambia then Uganda will definitely have want you to show the um, yellow fever. If you're going directly into Uganda from uh, Europe or North America, then it, it's, not, it's not very difficult at all. Um, next question, are malaria pills recommended for any area? I would say no. Um, a lot of Uganda is at high altitude, uh, which means that the nighttime temperatures get quite cool, which is below the temperatures that the malaria uh, carrying insects can survive at. Um, I live in in Nairobi and we are at five and a half thousand feet, 1,550 meters above sea level, and I don't take malaria pills. I've got three young kids uh, and none of us take malaria pills. Um, we actually don't take malaria pills when we go to the Kenya coast or the or, or Zanzibar, for example. Um, but then that's a that's a choice that we make. We just make sure we don't get bitten. Um, but again, you know, I'm not a medical practitioner. If you want to ask um, clients, want to ask the medical practitioners, then um, that's probably the best advice. But for Uganda, no, not required. Please, if there's any more questions, let me know. If that's it, guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much indeed. If you want to give me any feedback at all um, on anything we've talked about or you want some more information, I'm always, always happy to um, to talk about Uganda. It's a stunning, stunning country. The people are absolutely wonderful. Um, and whilst the accommodation is not as uh, um, whilst the accommodation is not as as luxurious as certain parts of Kenya or Tanzania. Uh, Uganda, you, Uganda, you really go there for the experience. Um, are temperatures cool during the high season? It depends on where you are, but I would say that when you're certainly when you're tracking the gorillas, you would need a sweater of an evening, um, plus long pants, long trousers. Average temperature would be you want it in, in Fahrenheit as well, won't you? Um, average temperature during the during the day in peak season, which is generally the, the hottest time of the year, January, February, March, would be 75. I've got that right. Um, yeah, about 75 uh, or so. And then night time, it'll probably drop to sort of your, your mid-60s. And then during the, the cooler times, which is January, July, August, September, then daytime temperatures are still pretty high at 70-odd. And then a little bit lower, maybe 55 in the evening. It, look, it never gets cold enough to freeze. We don't, um, yeah, we don't, we don't worry about things like that in this part of the world. Uh, will there be a farm trip in the future? I would love one. Um, I just hope there's. Um, I mean, if, if people are interested, then look, I'd always, always welcome the opportunity to show off, um, off Uganda to people. Um, fantastic place, fantastic country, uh, and, and something I would love to. Um, and I'd love to host myself as well. Any excuse for me to go back to see the chimps and the gorillas is a is a good one in my book. Um, any more questions? Shall I give you guys another minute or so? If there is anybody with another question, please feel free to type it in. Okay, I think that's it. As I said, we'll make sure you get the presentation. Um, it's certainly in the next couple of days, whether it's on Dropbox or whether you download it from our from our website. Look, thank you for the um, thank you for the feedback. I I appreciate that. And if there is anything else that we can do to help you sell Uganda, do do please let us know. Um, I think everybody deserves the opportunity to spend some time with the chimps and the gorillas. That's it from me. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Um, 
if there is anything else anybody needs, uh, please let us know. We're, we're very easy to get in contact with. Um, it's been my pleasure. Have a fantastic day, and we'll see you at a, hopefully at another webinar. We do have a one for Kenya, one for Tanzania, both coming up, but you will get emailed about that. My email address is jrturner at abercrombiekent.co.ke. That's jrturner at abercrombiekent.co.ke. .ke. I am typing it into the chat now, so you should all be able to see it. Let me just make sure I spelt it correctly, because that would be rather embarrassing. Um, Abercrombiekent. There you are. Um, if you go to the chat box, you should be able to see my email address there. I'll give you guys a few moments if you want to pull that. Um, if you want to pull that off. Okay, I think that's it from me. Thank you all very much indeed. It's been an absolute pleasure. And um, yeah, maybe we get to see each other face to face in the future. Thank you all very much indeed. Have a great day. Bye-bye.